the grade tens. Welcome to week 37. In this week we're going to be doing exam preparation and we're going to be looking at paper two. So we're basically going to go through the paper two that's in the system. So either download the paper and do it and then um, or try and do it and then come through the go through the videos with me. Or another option is just to go through the videos but what I'd really strongly suggest is that you pause the video every time a question is presented, read the question, decide what your answer is or work it out and then carry on with the video and see if you got it right. Okay, question one says using knowledge of atomic number and atomic mass. Which one of the following statements is true about the elements 8, 16x and 16, 32y? So atomic number is the number of protons protons in the nucleus right and atomic mass is the number of protons plus neutrons because both the protons and the neutrons basically add to the mass of the atom now it says so we've got x which is 816 y which is 1632 now remember the small number is always the atomic number and the big number is the protons and the neutrons, so that's atomic mass. So X do we agree? Since it's got 816, it's got 8 protons, it's got 16 protons and neutrons, and therefore we can say that it therefore has 8 neutrons. Agreed? Y is 16 32, which means it's got 16 protons. It happens to have 16 protons and neutrons, and therefore we can say that it has got 16 neutrons. Okay, so now let's have a look at this. It says they have the same mass number. No, they don't, so we can cross it out. They're in the same group in the periodic table. Okay, so we don't have a periodic table in front of us, so and we don't know what X and Y are, but let's just think about that for a minute, and let's go back. There's the same number of electrons. Well, that's not really true, because the number of electrons in an atom, a neutral atom, equals the number of protons. And X has got 8 protons, and Y has got 16 protons, so that's not true. We've just shown that they don't have the same number of neutrons and therefore the fact that they are in the same group in the periodic table has to be correct. Ta-da! See how easy it is. Let's move on. Aluminium is in group 3. Okay, Its oxide will have the following formula. So you've got ALO, ALO2, AL2O3, AL3O2. So aluminium is in group 3. So it's in group 3 over here. And basically that means that it's going to have a valency of Al3+. The oxide means that it's joining up with oxygen. And you can see that oxygen is in group 6, which means that its charge when it's an ion is O2-. Now remember there's an easy way to do this and that's basically to just swap these. Swap these numbers. So it's going to be Al2 O3. So the correct answer is C. But let me just prove it to you. If it's got Al3+, plus, it means it has the facility to make three bonds. That's one, two, three. Oxygen with a two minus means it has the facility to make two bonds as well. So that's O, one, two. But now there's a spare arm here. Yeah? So we add another oxygen. So that's one, two. Which means now we have to add another aluminium. So that's one, two, three. So finally we have to add another oxygen and that gives you two aluminiums and three oxygens. But the easy way to do it, remember, is just to swap the numbers. That's a quick, easy way to do it. Okay, moving on. It says the ionic bonding diagram for calcium fluoride is, so this is supposed to be calcium fluoride. So the first thing we need to do is look at what cal where calcium is. So do you see that calcium is over here? And calcium is in the second group, so it's CA2+. And fluorine is in group 7, which means its fluorine is going to be a minus 1. So we obviously need two fluorines for every one calcium. So obviously that is wrong, and that is wrong, 
and that is not the ionic bonding diagram so therefore it has to be B where here is your calcium with a 2 plus here is the 1 fluorine and here is the other fluorine and that's the ionic bonding diagram for calcium fluoride moving on so the pair of atoms are isotopes of each other so which pair of atoms are isotopes so what are isotopes isotopes have the same number equal number of protons but but they have different different number of neutrons that means the atomic number which is the smaller number the atomic number is going to be equal but the mass number is going to be different it's going to be not equal it's going to be different okay so the atomic number remember is always the smaller number so that's going to be equal so do you see that over here we've got six and seven so that's wrong five and six that's wrong eight and fifteen that's wrong and there we go we've got it so what 11 and 11 is the atomic number and 22 and 21 so this has got 22 protons and neutrons and this has only got 21 protons and neutrons so therefore these are isotopes of each other which of the following is a chemical change now remember chemical change is when there's actually a change in the compound okay so in other words when we have water which changes from water from ice to liquid in the form of water that we used to to um, steam or gas that is not a chemical change this is not chemical because all that's happening is that because they still remain if I said what is the molecular formula of ice you'd say H2O if I asked you what is the molecular formula of water you'd say H2O if I said what is the molecular formula of steam you'd say H2O so they're all the same so the chemicals haven't changed the way the combined hasn't changed so this is a physical change this is which of the following is a chemical change so anything with freezing and solidifying or melting is not a chemical change so which of the following is a chemical change water vapor forms frost is not a chemical change carbon dioxide freezes at minus 78 degrees Celsius is not a chemical change so the next one you got is silver tarnishes and salt dissolves in water and yeah it's a bit tricky we automatically think that salt dissolving in water is a chemical change but it's not because that all that's happening is that the salt is going in between the particles silver tarnishing is your silver reacting with your oxygen to form silver oxide okay that's what's happening here so the correct answer silver tarnishing that is a chemical change so it says the balance equation of the reaction between nitrogen and hydrogen is okay so let's look at this we want nitrogen plus hydrogen and what does it do it gives us ammonia so let's balance this ourselves we have two nitrogens here and we've only got one so now we need to put it two but this now gives us six hydrogens two times three is six so we need to put a big three in front of this because that's three times two is six as well okay so what are we looking for we're looking for nitrogen three hydrogens and two ammonias this has got one of each that's wrong one of each that's wrong this has got three hydrogens tick one nitrogen tick and two ammonias tick so the correct answer is C okay a compound that is present in the larger amount in solution is called a what a solute a solvent electrolyte and precipitate now this is theory and a lot of people that if you t think that if you take um, a solid and you dissolve it in water then the solid is called the solute and water is called the solvent okay fair enough but what happens if we've got two liquids or if we've got yeah if we've got two liquids then what happens when we want to make a compound or a mixture where there is two liquids then the larger amount is called the solvent and the smaller amount is called the solute okay so that is a theory piece of theory that you should know please learn it 
Finally, which sphere near the surface of the Earth, near the surface of the Earth, contains water? And that's pretty easy. It is the hydrosphere, because that from hydro, hydrosphere, there's the water sink thing. Okay, and that grade tens is the multiple choice section of this paper too. Please join me for the rest of the paper in the following videos. Have a great day.